uh, hi friends so in this video we shall be discussing a very important topic of gastric outlet obstruction where we'll be focusing mainly on the metabolic changes that occur in a case of gastric outlet obstruction but before moving towards that let's take a look at few of the causes which i've enlisted over here the causes of gastric outlet obstruction could be pyloric stenosis secondary to peptic ulceration acid ingestion carcinoma stomach bezoars gastrointestinal stomal tumor gastric lymphoma pancreatic mass annular pancreas compression due to enlarged lymph nodes and pyloric mucosal diaphragm so what happens in gastric outlet obstruction so there is vomiting now the cause of this vomiting what happens is there is a phase of chronic dehydration now because of this chronic dehydration there is loss of hydrogen loss of chloride and loss of potassium now this loss of chloride is going to lead to hypo chloramic now this loss of potassium is going to cause hypo kalemia now what happens because of this loss of h plus iron is that it leads to a state of alkalosis now this alkalosis is a metabolic alkalosis now why is this a metabolic alkalosis because over here the lungs are normal so this is a case of metabolic alkalosis as lungs are normal now because of this alkalosis body tries to compensate or combat the situation now body will try to compensate right so now how this compensation is going to occur it is going to occur in form of loss or rather excretion of bicarbonate through kidney now as this bicarbonate is being lost along with this bicarbonate the sodium ions are lost so during this na plus ions are lost now what is this leading to this is basically leading to a state of hyponatremia now we very well know that this low sodium ions or a state of hyponatremia is going to ring the bell of a system which is the ras system so there is going to be activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system now what happens because of the activation of this ras system it is going to liberate aldosterone now we know the function of aldosterone what is it going to do it is going to cause retention of sodium and water now along with that it is going to excrete what h plus and potassium ions now because of this excretion what is going to happen is urine that is coming out is going to be rich in hydrogen ions and potassium ions so what is going to happen so basically it is leading to metabolic alkalosis hypokalemia hypochloremia hyponatremia and paradoxically the urine is rich in potassium 
and hydrogen ion so we have a final metabolic abnormality which is metabolic alkalosis with paradoxical acid urea and to that you can add hyponatremic hypokalemic and hypochloremic so let's take a look at this changes once again so we have a phase of vomiting now this vomiting is going to cause chronic dehydration now what is going to happen there is going to be loss of H plus ions chloride ions and potassium ions so there is going to be a phase of hypokalemia hypochloremia now because of loss of H plus ion there is going to be an alkalosis now this alkalosis is going to be a metabolic alkalosis why metabolic alkalosis because the lungs are normal in this case now because of this metabolic alkalosis body is going to try to compensate for it now how is it going to compensate it is going to compensate by loss of HCO3 through kidney now as this bicarbonate ions are lost during this sodium ions are lost along with it now because of which it is going to cause hyponatremia now we know that because of hyponatremia this is going to lead to activation of the RAS system this activation of RAS system is going to cause aldosterone liberation now this aldosterone liberation is eventually going to cause retention of sodium and water and excrete hydrogen and potassium ions which is going to make urine rich in hydrogen ions and potassium ions so as a result of which the metabolic abnormality or the changes that we get over here are I write it down again hyponatremic hypo Calamic, hypochloremic, metabolic alkalosis with paradoxical acid urea. So this is very commonly asked in your vivas and your final semester examinations and is definitely a potential mcq in each and every exam where you would be simply asked regarding the metabolic changes which of the following is true regarding the metabolic changes of your gastric outlet obstruction thank you